about two thirds of Indians have not heard about the Israeli spyware Pegasus. But one fourth of the people who have heard about it support its use on politicians. What is even much more concerning is out of the 9,700 odd people which were queried across 12 states by Lokniti, CSDS and Common Cause, 20% support its use against bureaucrats, journalists, as well as lawyers such as me. Pegasus is in the news cycle given last week's disclosures by several opposition politicians that they received an alert from Apple on their iPhones about being targeted by state-based attackers. And in this video, I'm here to explain to those two-third people which have not heard about it, what is the Pegasus spyware in greater detail. I'm also making this video with an attempt at persuasion for the people who do support these spyware technologies for the use against politicians in India. So if you've heard about it or even if you've not heard about it, let this video provide you a greater basis of understanding about what is a spyware technology such as Pegasus, what has been the institutional response by either the union executive or the Supreme Court. Now let us start with first understanding what is Pegasus. Pegasus is one kind of spyware technology which infects a smartphone secretly. And when it is installed, it gives complete remote access, which means that the person who has infected that smartphone gets complete control over that device. For instance, the real-time location, access to the microphone, camera, gallery, contacts. It knows where you're traveling, where you've been, who you're talking to, what you're thinking, because it may also have the provision for keyboard access, and which can secretly be installed on a person's phone through a device vulnerability. All of this comes across from a training manual which has been filed in a legal complaint by WhatsApp against NSO Group which has made this software. NSO Group is an Israeli company and there are several such companies which are making spyware. And it says that it has made this spyware only for government and intelligence agencies to fight crime and terror. And the export of this technology is actually classified in Israel as an arms export which needs clearance from the Israeli Ministry of Defense to ensure that the end user is actually in government. So these spyware technologies are incredibly sophisticated, very expensive and are primarily intended to be used by governments against national security threats. However, let's see how it has been used in India. There have been two instances of the use of Pegasus in India. The firstly, on October 30th, 2019, WhatsApp informed specific users, mostly activists and human rights defenders, that due to a vulnerability in WhatsApp, they were targeted and infected with Pegasus. And this was also confirmed by Citizen Lab, which specializes in forensic and technical investigations. The official response to this by the then cabinet minister, Mr. Ravi Shankar Prasad, was of denial and bluster. He immediately took to Twitter that he had sent notices to WhatsApp and started an investigation, but we still do not know what came out of it. Now, the second set of disclosures were in fact even more damning. They came on July 19, 2021. This came as part of a wider disclosure called the Pegasus File, and it revealed that a long list of politicians, primarily from the opposition, as well as constitutional functionaries, such as a former chief election commissioner or even the head of the CBI were potentially infected with the Pegasus spyware. This led to wider social alarm given that it was just not civil society activists any longer. The government response was of dismissing these claims. The present union minister, Mr. Ashwani Vaishnav, actually stated that this was an attempt to disrupt the monsoon session of parliament. But when he made a statement on the floor of the house, did not clearly state that whether India procured the spyware Pegasus and used it. These two instances clearly show that the government is avoiding a direct answer to the question as to whether it has actually used Pegasus and procured it not only for national security, but against its own political opponents, as well as people in different layers of the Indian institutional apparatus who acts as checks and balances on the power of the union government. And this is why it becomes really important for us to also look at what has been the institutional response by the Supreme Court of India. Due to evasion as well as a lack of investigation on the claims around the use of Pegasus, several petitioners approached the Supreme Court. Most of them happened to be journalists and their prayers were for the disclosure by the cabinet secretary on whether the use of Pegasus spyware had actually been done on them. The Supreme Court, while hearing this matter, repeatedly posed questions to the Solicitor General of India on whether the use of spyware had been done on their phones, which was met with further evasion and led to the court to even express, quote unquote, you do not want to take a stand. The only response by the union government was of filing a limited affidavit which was filed on August 16 and annexes the statement of the cabinet minister on the floor of the parliament where he states all surveillance in India is done as per due authorization without answering in yes or no that whether spyware has actually been used. 
faced with the prospect of non-cooperation by the union government, which would stall any kind of meaningful advance in this petition, the court on October 27, 2021, constitutes an expert committee and poses questions including what was the government response after the first Pegasus disclosures were made in 2019, as well as whether the government has actually procured the Pegasus spyware. In constituting this expert committee, it actually rejects a proposal by the union government where it says that we will constitute our own government committee, to which petitioners are voicing apprehensions that our phones would have been infected, most possibly by the union and the government of India. So actually it will be investigating its own case and there is a huge conflict of interest. So the court actually sets up its own expert committee and it poses questions which are directly aimed at the union of India. Now, even at that time, it is not as if the Supreme Court was without fault. For it had stopped the working of a committee which had been constituted by the state of West Bengal and was headed by Justice Madan B. Logur, who himself is a former judge of the Supreme Court of India. Now, fast forward, next year in 2022, the expert committee of the Supreme Court submits a report in a sealed cover and certain excerpts from it are read out. Now, when these excerpts were read out, the court stated that the committee examined the phones but could not come to a clear answer whether Pegasus spyware was actually found on it. And this becomes problematic because the report was kept in a sealed cover. We do not know the methodology. Even the petitioners who had approached the court are not given a copy of the report. Secondly, the excerpt which is read out subsequent to this is also that, that the union government did not cooperate. So there's also a very reasonable basis to assess that the committee just based on a technical examination of the phone rather than an uh, admission or a denial by the cabinet secretary on affidavit that whether you procured this technology or not, which is another form of evidence, could come to a clear answer that Pegasus was indeed used in India. Based on all of this, people tend to say that nothing came out of the Pegasus allegations. They are mere allegations which were never proved. They were never proved actually and nothing came out of it as a question mark to our institutional capacity rather than to questioning the claims of the victims. Because the basis of their claims are actually a forensic report by Amnesty which has also been cross-checked by Citizen Lab and subsequent disclosures which have also been made. So let's look at them. Now one of the first things subsequently which corroborates the use of Pegasus on these phones has been a report by the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project, which in October 2022 disclosed that shipment data from Israel to India matched the export of Pegasus and this was procured by the Intelligence Bureau. They even came down to a specific year, which is 2017, and I've linked to this news report. The second report comes from the Financial Times this year in March, which states that due to a PR problem around Pegasus, India is now looking to procure spyware technologies from other vendors and these are through contracts which range between 16 to potentially 120 million dollars. So actually there's a lot of money behind the procurement of spyware technologies and it is continuing today. Now it, since India has been actively looking to procure software, there's no official denial. It should not come as a surprise that on October 30th and 31st, Apple sent out a range of notifications to several opposition politicians including Priyanka Chaturvedi, Mahua Moitra, Shashi Tharoor, Paman Khera, Supriya Shrinate. All of this were alerts which have come at the eve of five state assembly elections and a few months before the general elections. And this is why I think if somebody has the ability of getting into the phones of our politicians, it attacks and is a sledgehammer to the very roots of Indian de uh, uh, democracy. Now this alert is a specific alert which is sent by Apple and the first line actually says alert state-based attackers are trying to get into your smartphones and the entire text of this notification has been pasted repeatedly by the politicians who have received it on Twitter. Subsequent to that, if you also look at it, Apple has its own support page where it explains this notification and why it has sent it. It says that it has sent it specifically after due study, however, cannot indicate which state is doing it and also can be so sophisticated and expensive to conduct that this may also be just a false flag. Now, the primary response which has come from government and sections of the media which support the government has been first to engage in disinformation, which is to say that this was an algorithmic malfunction which caused this specific alert by Apple to be sent out or to generalize and mischaracterize its statement by saying that this kind of alert is sent to 150 countries while ignoring the fact that historically it is a system which has been implemented by Apple after the Pegasus files disclosures to notify specific people who have been targeted and place their phones in what is called as lockdown mode. So it's a specific notification which has come to opposition politicians 
organizations in India. It's not a generalized advisory which has gone out in 150 countries. And if it has been sent, it has been sent historically to targets who have actually been there in 150 countries where iPhones are sold. So this is mischaracterization and misinformation. And the last bit of misinformation which has been engaged in is the reference to a follow-up email which Apple sends and says that we cannot say with certainty who are these state-based attackers, but we do recommend you get into touch with digital security helplines such as those run by Access Now. And this led to some bit of controversy, first emerging from right-wing trolls and then going towards even Sanjeev Sanyal, who is an economic advisor to the Prime Minister. There were questions posed as to the funding of a non-profit digital rights group which offers a security helpline all over the world, that is Access Now which led to far-fetched conspiracy theories that George Soros is behind these alerts with a view towards disparaging Indian democracy, which is nothing but engaging in conspiracy theories without any factual basis. Which is why when Zaka Jacob, when I was on his show on CNN and IBL, put repeated questions to Sanjeev Sanyal, Sanjeev Sanyal said, I don't know, I'm just asking questions. While asking questions may be a, a proper Socratic method in a classroom, when done with the intention of spurring conspiracy, sowing doubt in the use of a spyware technology, when there are specific alerts from Apple to opposition politicians, this is actually a form of disinformation and government propaganda. Finally, let me come to the government response, which is again evasive. There's no clear answer whether spyware has been procured in India, whether it has been used against opposition politicians. And this is evident from the tweets, as well as a press conference which was done by the cabinet minister Sri Ashwini Vaishnav. Sure, he stated that an investigation has been ordered by him and will be conducted by the Computer Emergency Response Team, but there is no basis to the charges which have been made by the opposition politicians. He also asked the opposition politicians to cooperate with this probe, submit their phones, but what is most interesting is again the same model which has been used, which was used in 2019. Here, notices have been issued to Apple to cooperate with this technical investigation, just as they were issued to WhatsApp in 2019. Secondly, when the minister has already made up his view and said that there is little basis to these kind of allegations being made and it is only being made by people who cannot stand the progress of this country under the leadership and the vision of the Prime Minister, then people who are reporting to him whose posting salaries and transfers can be influenced by a cabinet minister, entire investigation is prejudiced. Now, even if we presume certain will do a credible investigation, the investigation done by it only will be done on the technical examination of the phone as well as responses by Apple. There will be no summoning, no examination of witnesses, there will be no admission denial which will be done of the intelligence agencies, specifically the cabinet secretary, who can in two seconds provide the answer whether Pegasus has been procured in India, for how much money, how it is used, and what safeguards are in place, whether it is used actually against opposition politicians. All of this analysis has been presented by me in a recent op-ed I've authored for the Indian Express, and a link to it is contained in the description below. So thank you so much for watching Amalta's Talks. I'm really grateful for you taking out this time, and I hope you found this video of value. My attempt has been to show that spyware technologies such as Pegasus actually threaten all of us ordinary Indians because it compromises the ability of public officials and our representatives to perform their constitutional duties. And as I always say, if you find this video interesting and engaging, feel free to forward it into your least favorite WhatsApp group where you feel out of place. It may be your RW or alumni group where only good morning messages, non veg jokes, misinformation and rampant bigotry is shared. And I'm sure there will be two outcomes. One, either you will be kicked out of the group or second, there will be complete silence for some period of time. So thank you so much for watching Amal Talks and till we meet again, bye.